Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. I have a very special channel for you today. Many of you have requested this and it has been on my list for a while. I've actually spoken with him previously on audio prior to Above Life Channel. But today I have for you in the house, in the kitchen with me, Mr. Elvis Aaron Presley. Welcome. He's so pretty mild-mannered, like pretty, um, he's very polite, and he's a little soft-spoken right now, and he looks like he was later in his life, you know, maybe late 30s, as I'm looking at him now. Um, I remember growing up and watching some of the old movies with you, and thinking you were really good looking as a young man, and uh, just, you know, I think it was the eyes and the hair, he's like, it's the hair. Definitely the hair, he says. Definitely the hair. And interesting, when I set up to do this channel, like I said, I've been um, intending to interview him for a while, and so, and it's fun. I'm looking forward to this one. I, I this will be a fun one for me, I believe. And I, I'm a fan of Elvis, and I would say that because, and I'm not sure why. Like I don't really have a reason. Like I don't remember his music or anything like that. Um, he died, you died shortly before, uh, or not too long after I was born, a few years after I was born. And so I don't really know, I just know the legend of you, and which is a powerful legend. He said, there's a lot of music there, isn't there? He said, there's a lot of music there. And he says, like your prince. I know. <laughs> Minnesotan, thanks for acknowledging, feeling the love there. Um, I do want to share with the um, uh, the viewers here that, so one thing you asked for, which Spirit, I don't know that anybody's actually requested anything of me. I, I set a chair up for you. I'm in my kitchen where the magic happens. He's right across from me here in the chair. And he asked for water, a glass of water would be nice, he said. I'm like, okay. So I gave him a glass of water and that's interesting, but hey, whatever makes you feel comfortable and um, welcome. This is really wonderful to have you here. And I wear my leopard for you and, you know, um, feeling the vibes. But you feel so mild, so just relaxed. So I have some questions I'd like to chat with you about unless you have something you'd like to begin with. He says, no, go ahead, ma'am. Go right ahead. All right. Um, I know that you were preceded in death. Um, by a twin brother and your mother. And from what I understand, the loss of your mother was a deep, deep one for you. And that maybe sent a ripple for you um, in your life. And so I want to acknowledge that because there will be many viewers who have lost their parents, lost a mother or father that they were close to. And we want to recognize the healing power of whatever energy comes forward from what you share. Um, and Elvis Aaron Presley. That's what I just said. I just heard that. Elvis Aaron Presley. This is my mama used to call me when she's called me and she called me by my full name. And then I, that's how I knew I was in trouble. He says, that's how I knew I was in trouble. She called me, mama, mama called me by my full name. And he, there's a lot of love for his mother, really heart connection. So did you meet her in the afterlife? I think it's really curious, I think, for people to know, like at the moment of, of death, when the body dies and the soul leaves the body, do you get greeted? Did you get greeted? I know it's individual, it's personal for everyone. Did you get greeted by your brother or your mother or anybody in the afterlife? He's saying, I want to say the colonel. Does that make sense? Like when you say Colonel, I think Kentucky Fried Chicken. He said, no, he's like, no, no, long before that. I'm like, okay, um, must have been a manager. I don't know if I know that. My brain can't tap into that detail. Oh my gosh, I might sound crazy. The Colonel, um, like a manager, I think, I feel like. He says, greeted by the Colonel, um, man, father figure. Like, um, I'm feeling like his dad wasn't in the picture. Um, I know, I remember, I don't know if I saw a movie about your life, like when I was young, because I can recall or remember you going into the military and I can remember you buying your mama a car or a house or something like that, that that was important. 
I don't remember a kernel though, so I hope I'm not. I hope that's not totally a crazy detail that I'm off on. I hope I hope that's accurate. He says, "Yes, ma'am, that's accurate. That's right on." He says, "That is right on." Mm -hmm. You are right on in that one. Um, so, what about your mama? So, yeah, he said, "Yes, welcome me with open arms." He says, "It is kind of how you picture it, how they teach you in church, but I suppose it's because." He's reflecting on this now. He says, I suppose it's because that's what you, that's what you expect. That's what you know. If that's what you know, that that's what it is. It might be that it is custom that you make your heaven whatever it is for you, that it will be that. He's showing me like a lamb and a cross and Jesus. So is there a connection with Jesus for you? Yes, ma'am. Strong connection. And he shows me a cross. He's wearing a cross around his neck. And I see a gold cross and a silver cross. So I don't know if it's multiple or if he always wore a cross. He says, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And um, very polite. He's so he's very charming. Let me just tell you that. Because he just feels so polite, sweet. Um, and say G Gladys Gladys do I know that like I might know that in my brain Gladys is that your mother yes it feels like yes yes I believe so I believe that's the inner I believe that's what he's saying but he's he's trying to tell me like being received by Jesus and he says the funny thing is you don't have to believe anything but what you believe it what is what creates your transition into that place that you're calling afterlife that many people will call heaven that you create that so whatever you believe is what is your experience he, he says that's what I know for me that's what I can share for me but I had a powerful relationship with Jesus my life my whole life I know you I know you sung gospel music I know that very powerful I can see it I can see you almost having more of a a need to connect with God after your mom died is that true yes ma'am I was lost for a while for a long time and he shows me getting a car accident um drinking and making some bad choices and he's acknowledging that and uh, making some real bad choices and I just put myself into my music for a while, I didn't really want much to do with it. And he said, he's telling me he feels like he was cheated. So there might have been like a record deal or maybe like a manager thing or something. Like he feels like he was cheated and it feels like a business cheating. Like somebody screwed him over money or something like that. But he's not saying that. That's how it feels to me. Like he lost money or he was taken advantage of or something. And he says rockabilly. Um, as far as influences, he shows me a bass guitar. I don't know if that's what he played. I'm not into music, you guys. I don't know. And I feel like he had trouble with his hips. That sounds kind of funny. <laughs> because I know Elvis like, is known for his gyrations on stage and like, ah, girl screaming. And you know, he said, that was the younger me. He's saying, that was the younger me. That was the younger me. <laughs> Okay, um, but yeah, he said, yeah, like arthritis in his hips, it looks like, his hip joints, like sore, like not not as wiggly as they, not as uh, movable, posable as they used to be, it looks like. And, but I feel like, so Jesus was an influence more so after your mother died, but your mom is like, mama was a church lady, mama was a church lady. And oh, the choirs, you know, and he says the Negro choirs, you know, I would say African American, um, but the beautiful choirs and their voices and the influence of that. And he says, Alabama, Mississippi, Alabama, um, Mississippi, Alabama, for some reason, I'm feeling that area. And I'm, he's showing me like African American choir just singing and moving with the robes and just really clapping their hands and just that alive energy. Um, I could see him just sitting in there just being like, yeah, like he just moved by that, really enjoyed the rejoicing of that energy, the rejoice energy. He says, that was when I felt most alive. So Elvis, you lost your way. I mean, I know you died in your 40s and... 
I can't imagine, like, I mean, I'm, that's where I'm at for age. And I can't imagine, and I know you had a child, I obviously Lisa Marie, and um, with Priscilla, you had a child. And so I can't even imagine, uh, like, not being around for my kids. I can't even imagine that at this point. He said, oh, she was older at that time. She looks like she was a teenager. Um, And then eventually, you know, she married Michael Jackson. He kind of just like sits up a little bit like, mm, we all make mistakes, he says. <laughs> uh, Although spirits would not judge in the afterlife, right? He says, as a father, I would have had feelings about that. He said, I would have had some strong feelings about that. Did you know Lisa has a beautiful voice? He said, she has a beautiful voice. She has a beautiful voice. Okay. And he says, I didn't treat Priscilla right. He said, she forgave me a lot. I didn't treat her right. And he says, I wasn't perfect, but I was far from perfect. And he said, when the, there were times when it was really bad for me. It looks like him drinking, like a lot of drinking. Now, I think I read something, or somebody might have posted on my Above Life channel a comment about how you dated Natalie Wood. Is that true? Yes, ma'am, I dated many actresses. They call me up and we go out in the town. Yeah, and I heard that you kind of hung out with your boys and that kind of thing. And, you know, maybe I don't want to say we're rowdy, but a little, you know. Uh, yes, ma'am. Wow, that was a wild boy. Yep, I was a wild boy. Mama would not be proud of me at times. But sometimes I could be a right nice gentleman. Right nice gentleman. He definitely has a southern accent. I apologize for you guys. I am from Minnesota. I do not have a good southern accent, so I cannot translate that very well. Um, he has a big gold chain. There's something gold. In fact, if I would have had a gold necklace, I would have worn it because I feel like I need gold. Very connected to Elvis. Gold, like a gold chain. I'm very connected to Elvis. It's not super heavy, but there's something here. It could be a cross because I saw that twice. I saw a gold and a silver, but it kind of was intertwined, intermingled. So... Interestingly, will you talk to me about, um, I want to talk about Graceland a little bit. I have to drink some water, you guys. What would you like to know? Well, I drove by there once. Uh, I didn't actually go in. I don't remember if it was closed or what. I was on a road trip with my sister. Um, I stopped at the little mini mart across the street and got a little guitar, a little red guitar with Elvis. And I've always been drawn to you, like connected. I'm not sure what that's about, but I, but that's about it. Like, oh, I feel like I know you. Um, but Graceland, I remember seeing it, you know, the brick with the white and, and I know that you died there. Um, and... I know that it wasn't very dignified. You've told me that before. And so, and I didn't know that. The first time I channeled Elvis, I did not know how he died. I just knew he died. And he tells me he had a heart attack is what it looks like to me, heart attack. Um, it may have been heart failure because of all the medications and other things in his body that were not healthy. So it's not healthy, not at all. Um, not at all healthy. He says, I could have used a good nutritionist. That, would have, that could have changed things for me. He said that really could have changed things for me. He said there was a lot of depression. He had a lot of depression. I don't know if he was clinically diagnosed with depression, but he had a huge depression. And he's telling me something about Sandy. I don't know who Sandy is, but he's saying Sandy. Like Sandy being there, Sandy was there. Somebody named Sandy. I don't know if it's a girlfriend or a friend or somebody in the house. But Sandy, Sandy was there. And... Um, he said, he's saying he's fine with other people coming into my house. He said, I'm fine with people being in my house. He says, um, I do show up there, though. He says, I do visit. I do visit. And so, Elvis, are you not incarnated then? I am not. No, ma'am. I visit. I will walk the grounds of Graceland from time to time, and sometimes people can see me. He's showing me a little dog. And it kind of looks like a wiener dog, but I have a wiener dog, so maybe he's just showing me a dog. But it looks like a little wiener dog. I don't know what that's about. Um, and then he says Jerry, the name Jerry comes forward. And um, he's talking about like the security people. They know that he's around. They know he's there. 
And it almost sounds like he's singing in the shower, like, I can't, I'm not even going to try to imitate it. Almost, I can't do it. I mean, I probably could, but you guys would just give me such, I would get so many comments. He says, do you know how many people imitate me? He's like, do you know how many people dress up like me for Halloween? Now think about how that feels. That is a strange phenomenon. Isn't that? I can't imagine dressing up like somebody else. That's what he's saying. Like, I can't imagine dressing up like somebody else. <laughs> I, does that, so does that bother you? He says, no, I just, I find it a strange phenomenon. Very strange. And he's saying something about astrology, like the full moon and the moon cycles. There's something about astrology or the moon cycles or something, the full moon, like energy, like he believes in that or he believed in that or there's some truth to that. He's saying there's truth to that. The, the like the zodiac sign that you're born under, the astrology charts, that kind of thing. He's talking about that. I don't know what the deal with that is, but he's talking about it. It makes a lot of sense. He's saying that makes sense. It's interesting because it's so different than your the religious part aspect of your life. And he's saying he didn't go to one church. It wasn't like he just went to one church. He just really was drawn into, um, he's like his mama, mama was into church. And he said, but he was really drawn into the music and the just the energy. He would say now he'd use the word energy. But back then he wouldn't have said that. He was just said it just felt so good to be there. It just felt so good. I always felt so good being there like a high, you know, natural high. It just felt so sweet in the music and the sound. It just felt so, and it, and it sounded so unique in the church, in the building. He's talking about the acoustics in the building just beautiful acoustics in some of these churches it just the the vibration is just he's just saying it's you know incredible amazing would you say it's like amazing grace yes ma'am very spiritual he's very spiritual um will you talk a little bit about the difference between spirituality and religion as an afterlife perspective that you have i know we're jumping around i want to cover a lot of different things um, and we can talk again, depending upon what other people want to learn or know about you. Please put that in the comments below, by the way. Right. So can you talk a little bit about spirituality and religion? He says, religion is sort of, religion is like the car. He's he likes cars. He really likes cars. He showed me fancy cars. He likes cars. Oh, likes cars. And there's something about convertibles. Big deal. Likes that. Likes cars. Um, really likes cars. And he says, it's like a car. Religion is like a car. That's what you ride in. That's the vehicle you ride in. And, but that's not God. Religion is not God. And everyone is spiritual. Everyone has spirit. Therefore, you're spiritual. And you do, he's saying to me, he's very polite. He's saying, you do a good job of talking about that. Thank you. Aww. We are all spirit. I'm a spirit. You're a spirit. Wouldn't you like to be a spirit too? <laughs> I'm sorry, Elvis, you're so mellow. You're not, I'm not saying you're not how I expected you to be. You're super polite too, but um, there's a little goofiness, like a little joking around that kind of comes with you that I, I like too. And now I see him a little bit older, like toward the end of his life, his face, his face is more round now. I could see the cheekbones before, now he looks more round in the face. And he says, you can say it, I was heavy. I was a heavy man. And he's talking about wearing body suits, like to tuck in things, to suck things in. Kind of like man spanks, but like body suits to suck them in, you know, suck in his gut. Like he's talking about that, like suck it in, suck it in, you know. So were you embarrassed about your weight? He says that it was the pills. The pills make you hungry and eat stuff you wouldn't normally eat and the stress of things. Well, what were you stressed about at that time? He says, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. And, uh, you know, you're not as young as you used to be and you got to keep up and it, it wears you down, it wears you down. That's why I think a lot of, uh, what a lot of musicians, a lot of performers feel that. Also, I would definitely say, I would say that that's, that's true for many. But I would give, P I would give some advice about that. But if you are feeling down, or if you are struggling or having a rough time of it, to know that you are not alone. There is a way that is so far beyond where you're at right now that you have access to, you can get to. He says not access, he's saying you can get to. You have a way that you can get to without escaping your human life. 
you have a way that you can access. And he's talking, he's showing me like singing and praying and praising and looking up, up above, like to God, to the creator, whatever you believe as angels or guides or he's like, Jesus, you have support. He's saying you have support when you're feeling bad, when you're feeling down, you just, you got to be willing to ask for that support, to receive that support. And if it's just you and God, you and Jesus, you and your angels, that's enough to save you. That's enough to protect you. That's enough to get you through, to move you through this time. It's temporary. Everything's temporary. Life is, tem life is temporary. You really do have to enjoy it, but enjoying it doesn't mean with pills or alcohol. You think that's fun. You think that's making you feel good, but it's just, it's just masking the pain, the reality of the loneliness that you feel, the abandonment that you feel. And if your loved ones are in heaven, just look up and know that they're there. They're the sun in the sky the moon at night, the stars smiling down on you. I know my mama would have said that to me if she could have spoken from the afterlife to me, tried to reach me, help me to feel better about life, give me some hope. That's what, That would be my advice to you. Look up. Don't get lost. Don't make, the, don't make the mistake of thinking other things, substances, substance, or other people can make you happy. That's between you and God and all those angels you have in heaven that, that died before you died. They are watching out for you. My mama said that. When I welcomed, when I welcomed my mama right into my mama's arms, I... I welcomed, I welcomed the afterlife. I was shocked. I could not believe what had happened. And I saw what had happened. I looked back and I saw my body all slumped over. It was not a pretty sight. But the love of my mama was there for me. And I felt it. But you know what? It wasn't that different and how I'd remembered it and felt it all along in every day of my life, even when she was not in my life. When I could not hug her, when I could not argue with her or hear her voice scolding me, Elvis Aaron Presley, I still felt her. I knew her in my memory and I felt her love every day of my life. It was not that different in the afterlife. I want people to know that. I want people to know that that they can feel that now where they're at. Just keep your heart clear. Keep your heart clear. Do not use drugs. Do not use those stimulants. Do not use alcohol, cigarettes. Do not use those things to feel better because you won't feel better. And it will just make it more difficult for you to connect with your mama in heaven. The ones you're missing, the ones your heart aches for in heaven. You can feel that love, that unconditional love. You can feel it now, anytime, any place, any church, any concert venue. You can feel. You can feel it in Graceland. I'm sure you can feel it in your pace of park too, ma'am. You can. That's the present of spirit. That's that soul. The true soul. Kind of ironic, isn't it? That's what real soul is. You're thinking it's music, it's not music. The whole time I'm talking to him and channeling, like right now, I am just shaking my leg. I hope it's not vibrating the camera, but I am like antsy. My leg is shaking, 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 shaking. 
I hope it's not distracting to you, but I feel like it's his energy. And I feel like he was like that, like almost like nicotine, like like a little shaky. Like I feel like that. Yes, ma'am. He's, he's apologizing. I apologize for that. He's super polite. Very polite. He says, oh, yes, I met my brother in heaven. But I think I always kind of knew my brother. I think he always kind of looked out for me. An angel in heaven for me, looked out for me, watched out for me best he could over my life. It's kind of strange though, looking at a vision of yourself pretty much is what it looked like. But he was with mama. He looked real young actually. Looked at me like a eight year old, 15 year old young man. That's what he looked like. Thanks for answering that. I was going to ask about that. I didn't. Didn't come back to that one. All right. Thank you very much, Elvis, Mr. Presley. It's a pleasure to chat with you. Look forward to talking to you again. If you all have questions for Elvis or things you'd like us to explore more, other topics you'd like us to explore in future videos, if that's okay with you, he said, my pleasure, ma'am, my pleasure. Oh, thank you. He just gave me a compliment. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I'm embarrassed now. Okay. Thank you. I will accept that. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much, right? Elvis is going to leave the building. He's like, oh. You know how many times I heard that? If I had a nickel for every time I heard that, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> All right. So this is Bridget at Above Life Channel. Remember here at Above Life Channel, the purpose is to inspire your spirit that these conversations with the afterlife can fill you up with hope for your life. Remember, it's your life, so live it. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and never miss a weekly channel. Thanks for being here.